Welcome back for another deep dive. We've got a fascinating one lined up today, driven by you. That's right, listeners. You've sent in a ton of articles about this company, so we're diving in. Borrowed Earth Collaborative, they call themselves. And for good reason, it seems. So let's unpack this, shall we? What is it about Borrowed Earth Collaborative that's got everyone so intrigued? Well, at the heart of it, they're all about art and design, but with a twist. They work with a material we often take for granted, stone. Stone. It's everywhere, yet you don't often think of it as a source of artistic inspiration. And that's where Borrowed Earth Collaborative comes in, led by this visionary designer, Ruchika Grover. She's really reshaping how we perceive stone. Ruchika Grover, right. The articles mentioned her background is pretty interesting, actually. Oh, absolutely. Her father was a trader, marble and granite, so she grew up around quarries traveling the world. Can you imagine that kind of childhood? Talk about early exposure. I can see how those experiences would shape someone's perspective. It's yeah. all over their work. At the core of Barter Earth Collaborative's mission, though, it's about transformation. Hmm. They take these stone remnants, you know, the bits usually considered waste. And they make art. Exactly. Stunning pieces really pushing the boundaries of what you can do. And they're committed to sustainability, which is a huge part of their appeal, I think. Yeah, the articles touched on that, how they use responsible sourcing and all. It's one thing to say you're sustainable, another to actually live it out. They're, they're walking the walk, that's for sure. 80% <laughs> solar-powered facilities, if that tells you anything. But it goes beyond that, even. Yeah. It's about Grover's whole philosophy toward the material itself. Oh, how so? She doesn't just see stone as this raw material. She sees it as, well, a canvas. It has history, it has inherent beauty, even the imperfections. The imperfections. Absolutely. The cracks, the veins, those become part of the story. It's about celebrating the uniqueness of each piece, which I find really fascinating. It's like each piece has a tale to tell, right? Yeah, exactly. And the way they create these pieces, it's this amazing blend of old and new. Traditional craftsmanship meets cutting-edge technology in their workshop. You don't often hear those two things in the same sentence. What does that look like, practically speaking? Well, they start with hand-drawn designs, really intricate stuff, and then they use things like CNC milling, even robotic fabrication, to get this incredible precision. Wow. So they're bridging the gap between artistry and technology, essentially. Right. It, you can really see that in their objects collection. They have this curated line of limited edition pieces, all made from, you guessed it, those leftover stone remnants. Oh, way. So instead of seeing scraps, they're seeing potential. That's amazing. It really is. Serveware, games, sculptures, you name it, they're finding beauty in these unexpected places, which I think is so inspiring, and the skill it takes. It must require such a high level of craftsmanship to work with those irregular pieces. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but that's part of what makes their work so special. Each piece is unique, and it speaks to their dedication to minimizing waste and maximizing creativity. It really makes you appreciate the artistry, doesn't it? But let's talk about how this goes beyond just objects. The articles you sent also mentioned some pretty impressive architectural collaborations. Oh, absolutely. That's another area where Borrowed Earth Collaborative is really pushing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. They're working on these large-scale installations, really blurring the lines between art and architecture. And still using stone as the primary material. That's impressive. It is. And they're doing some really innovative things with it. Like one project that really caught my eye was their collaboration with architect Tony Ingrau. They did this incredible installation at 50 Hudson Yards in New York City. I think I saw pictures of that. It's those like almost wave-like structures, right? Yeah. Made of stone, but somehow they look so fluid and light. Exactly. It's incredible how they achieved that sense of movement and lightness with a material that's inherently so heavy and solid. It yeah. speaks to their deep understanding of the material and their willingness to experiment. Yeah, you can't be afraid to push boundaries when you're working with a material like stone. It's about respecting its history, but also finding new ways to express its potential. And I think that's something Borrowed Earth Collaborative does really well. They do. And let's not forget the sustainability aspect. It's woven throughout all their work, even these large-scale architectural projects. It's easy to overlook sustainability when you're talking about projects of that scale, but it sounds like it's central to their approach. Oh, absolutely. They're sourcing their materials responsibly. They're minimizing waste throughout their process. And they're even thinking about the long-term environmental impact of their installations. So it's not just about making a statement. It's about truly integrating sustainability into every aspect of their work. Precisely. And, you know, that commitment to sustainability extends beyond just their choice of materials or their manufacturing processes. They're also really focused on minimizing waste during the design phase. Really? How so? 
Well, they've incorporated these advanced cutting techniques that allow them to use virtually every piece of stone. So even the smallest remnants can find new life in their work. It's quite remarkable. It sounds like they've really thought about this from every angle. It's about maximizing their resources and minimizing their impact, which is right. pretty impressive. Speaking of maximizing resources, the articles mentioned something about a new bath collection. Oh, yes. They're launching a line of bathroom fixtures, tubs, sinks, vanities, all crafted from single blocks of stone. Can you imagine? From a single block. That's <laughs> incredible. A whole bathroom from one block of stone. That's thinking big. It's a statement for sure. And it speaks to that zero waste philosophy they're so dedicated to. It really does. But, you know, earlier you mentioned their responsible sourcing practices. I'm curious to learn more about that. What makes a quarry responsible exactly? That's a great question. So Borrowed Earth Collaborative, they don't just work with any quarry. They seek out partners who prioritize, you know, environmental protection, ethical labor practices. They're really selective. So they're considering the whole picture, even at the source. Exactly. It's about the entire life cycle of the stone, from extraction to that final product. They're not just ticking boxes. They're invested in doing things the right way. It sounds like they're really trying to change the industry from within. They are. It's not just about their own success. It's about advocating for a more responsible, more sustainable design world overall. Which is pretty inspiring, honestly. Proof that you can aim for something bigger, even when it comes to design. So, as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the key takeaway you hope our listeners are left with? Honestly, for me, it's the way Borrowed Earth Collaborative is weaving together these seemingly disparate threads. Creativity, sustainability, ethical practices. They're showing that those things aren't mutually exclusive. They can coexist, even enhance each other. And it's not just about aesthetics, it's about the impact our choices have both on the planet and on each other. Precisely. It makes you think, right, how can we all be more conscious consumers? How do we support businesses that share those values? It's a good question to ask ourselves. Borrowed Earth Collaborative certainly gives us a lot to think about. They're not just creating beautiful things. They're challenging conventions, pushing boundaries, showing us what's possible when we think differently about design and its potential. Absolutely. It's about more than just the end product. It's about the story behind it, the people who made it, the impact it had on the world. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the incredible world of Borrowed Earth Collaborative. We hope you found it as fascinating as we did. It's a reminder that design can be a force for good, a way to create a more beautiful and sustainable world. Until next time.